In this module, we're going to look at reaction mechanisms, uh, the, the actual physical process by which a chemical reaction occurs. And it's, it's not always obvious by looking at the overall reaction what the mechanism is. So, for example, um, this reaction here, the, over, the reaction between nitrogen dioxide and carbon monoxide to make nitrogen monoxide and carbon, excuse me, uh, yeah, and carbon dioxide, the overall reaction is this. But, you know, so it might seem like what's happening is a carbon monoxide molecule is bumping into a nitrogen dioxide molecule, pulling one of these oxygen atoms off uh, and making nitrogen monoxide and carbon dioxide. But it ends up that really this happens by a two-step process. In the first step, two nitrogen dioxide molecules collide, make nitrogen trioxide and nitrogen monoxide, and then the nitrogen trioxide reacts with carbon monoxide to make nitrogen dioxide and carbon dioxide. This is experimentally determined to be, be the, the mechanism. This is the mechanism here, and these two steps are called the elementary steps, elementary processes, or elementary reactions, whereas this is the overall reaction, what we commonly write down when we're dealing with um, a chemical reaction. So when we are trying to figure out the mechanism. The mechanism is the series of elementary steps by which the process happens. Um, we have to make sure that a couple of, of truths are, are met. And that is that when we add up the elementary reactions, they must equal the overall reaction. So when we add up the first step and the second step, a nitrogen dioxide here and a nitrogen dioxide here. Just to remind you, when you're adding up chemical equations, it's just like algebra. If something appears on one side of the arrow and then the other, it cancels. Nitrogen trioxide cancels, nitrogen dioxide, one of the nitrogen dioxides cancel, and we get this, which yes, it is the overall reaction. Now, the species that we that cancel out when we add up the elementary steps are called intermediate, intermediates. The other thing that must be true is that the mechanism uh, must agree with the experimentally determined rate law. So it ends up that we know for this reaction that the rate law is a, it's a, it's second order in nitrogen dioxide, so it's equal to K concentration of nitrogen dioxide squared. And this works, this will fit our mechanism if the rate determining step is the first step. That is, if the slowest step is the first step. Because it's, if it's the slow step, the, also called the rate determining step, it's the bottleneck in, in, a, in a mechanism. So if this first step happens fast and the second step happens, I mean, excuse me, the first step happens slow and the second step happens fast, then what happens is it takes relative, a relatively long time for these to be made. Once they're made, they react really fast. The nitrogen trioxide reacts really fast and we get this happening. So that means that how fast this overall reaction happened the, is determined by how fast the slow step or the rate determining step happens. And so because the slow step depends upon the concentration of nitrogen dioxide um, squared basically, it does work. So what we can say when we look at elementary steps, we could not say this looking at at overall reactions, but looking at an elementary step, we can write the rate law in terms of the reactants. So we know, this being an elementary step, that the rate law for this step, step one, is this. It has to be some K times the concentration of nitrogen dioxide squared, this times that. That we can say. Right, so, and because it was true, both of our um, our, our um, requirements are met. And yes, that's a reasonable mechanism. All right. So, when we talk about molecularity, what we what we're talking about is the number of species that have to collide for an elementary step to occur. If it's a unimolecular reaction step then um, that means that only one species is involved, so it's going to be a dissociation. If it's bimolecular, two species are involved, and termolecular, three are involved. Now this is a really rare um, 
um, step, elementary step, because for three species to come together with the right orientation and the right energy, all these requirements, it's, it's pretty, pretty hard for that to happen. So this is a summary. Um, and now if the elementary step is just A going to products, it's unimolecular, and the rate for that step is um, K concentration of the reactant. And if that's the slow step, this will be the rate for the overall reaction. Bimolecular could be either two of the same molecule coming together, K times A squared, or it could be two different molecules coming together that's still bimolecular, but the rate would be K concentration of one times the concentration of the other. And then termolecular, we could have different combinations, two of one and one of the other, or all three different. And then we get these rate laws. So now let's do an example. Let's say, okay, we're trying to figure out the mechanism for a reaction. And this is the reaction right here. Carbon dioxide gas reacting with hydroxide in an aqueous solution to make carbonate and water. And let's say a, pro a proposed mechanism is this. The first step, which is the slow step, rate determining step, would be carbon dioxide reacting with hydroxide and make bicarbonate. The second fast step would be this. And it's known experimentally that the rate law is K, concentration of carbon dioxide, car concentration of hydroxide. So, you know, we want to see, is this a reasonable mechanism? So does it meet our requirements? In other words, does it add up? When we add up the elementary steps, does it add up to the overall reaction? And does the rate law for the slow step agree with the um, experimentally determined rate law for the overall reaction? So when we add up these two reactions, elementary steps, the bicarbonate is an intermediate, cancels out, and we get this, which yes, it is the overall reaction. And because the rate for the slow step is gonna be concentration of carbon dioxide times concentration of hydroxide, that does agree with our experimentally determined rate law. And so yes, this is a reasonable mechanism.